Hi there. Sunday afternoon and I'm playing in my studio. Just thought I'd, I'd like to get some of these um, bookmarks finished. I still got a couple under the machine, um, but I cut these off at the end. The ones on the machine are, are actually almost done. Um, but I thought I would uh, stop and get a couple embellished. And I'm trying to untangle. I like to use some different fibers and laces and just play fun like being a kid again you just have to untangle this there I think I can cut a piece off of that there it's a bit meditative and I never really know what I'm going to do until I until I do it and I will take it back to the machine to to sew it but um, I can't tell if this is one fiber or two but it's coming apart so so oh it looks like this is a cute one I like it I don't know how well you can see it from there I'll give you a close-up later um, I'm going to tack them down I think with a little bit of glue or maybe a pin but uh, what I want to do first is just kind of get them arranged. I'll use tweezers if I need them. I've got little bits of Angelina fiber. And if you've never heard of it, it's, um, it's a type of fiber. It's, uh, it comes in a little package that almost looks like mini sparkly tinsel. And uh, when you put it on a pressing sheet and put something on top of it and press it, it it presses into a, a little film and it's not sticky it's not tacky so if I put it on there it would it would end up having to be stitched but that's okay so I have to make an uneven edge and I think maybe I might put it underneath that right there Looks like a little bit of a sparkly sunshine you know and maybe I'll put it the other Ooh, that's pretty good I guess at that, which is good. And so I did bring over my jar of matte medium. I don't want to use too much of that because I'm going to be stitching through it, but I could possibly tack it down with just a little dab of it. So we'll see. And added even even a little drop to the Angelina fiber. So what I was thinking was that when I'm all finished these, because they are fabric, they are jelly prints, so they're fairly um, they're fairly sturdy. But I'm adding a bunch of things to them, and so I was thinking that maybe what I might do is actually put a layer of matte medium over the top, just brush it on when I'm all finished. So I just really want enough of this to tack it down unless I use a pin or, or something. So I'm not sure how it's going to work with the, with the matte medium, but um, I think I'll, I'll give it a try. It's a clear drawing medium, so I'm thinking it may, it may work well. Okay. So I just put a little bit there and I'm hoping it's just going to be enough to, to make it stick. As you can see, this is a very picky and probably not the best activity for somebody with very arthritic hands, but for some reason there's there are things that would probably drive me crazy, but I enjoy, I enjoy this work as picky as it is. I can only do it for a little while because it does, um, it does get hard on my fingers after a little bit. But you can see I use tweezers and um, I don't think I could do it if I didn't use the tweezers. They really help to grab something and there, okay, so that's more or less in place enough for 
for how I'd like to do it. Now what else? What else can I add? I think I'm actually going to put this one over here and here. So maybe I'll tack that one down too just a little bit. Yeah. This is, um, I have this ribbon in a couple of different colors. I don't know what it's called. It's just a kind of a decorator. It's like two silk threads with uh, little bars in between. And this one is a pink and these ones are turquoise and blue. I have a scrap bag of things that I use. I don't knit with anymore. I can't remember. I think they made some kind of a shawl or beaded necklace or something. Just enough to tack it in place where I want it. And a little stitching later back to the machine. They're really labor intensive, <laughs> although I don't see it as labor. I feel like I'm just a kid in the craft toy box again. I, I really enjoy it. And uh, I'm not selling them or anything, so excuse me, I'm talking with the paintbrush in my mouth. So um, it doesn't matter to me. I use them for little gifts for special people. and. Uh, I enjoy doing things like this. Okay. All right, so there's the second one. Now I have these little tiny bits of lace here and I'm thinking I might put these here as well. I happen to have two cut out. I'm not sure if I can use a third one or not. because I don't want to cover anything else up there. Um, okay. Put some glue underneath the Angelina fiber just to hold it. I need a brush in there. Now, what else? I do have some little scraps. I have more scraps of lace. I've got a big bag of lace that I collect. I don't buy very much, although occasionally I do. If I'm at the store and I see just uh, exactly what I like, I might buy a piece. But often I've had people give me bags of lace and tell me they're not they're not going to be using any more, so uh, I'll get a bag. So I have fairly a couple of fairly decent sized bags, and I cut from them. I use these for a lot of different things. Um, I use them in my fiber art. I like it, I've used it before um, in water scenes, the lace when it's cut up can look like water depending on how you how you put it down. Put another piece here too, but I don't think I'm gonna let me just put that piece there. This is one I wish I had more of, so I might look because I did get this at a store called Fabric Fill when I was there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a beautiful lace stitched on, on a tulle background. This is one that I've often used in, I've used this um, in a waterfall that I did. And the waterfall did have um, thread lace that I made myself. But it, and then in places I added this lace. And I just, I just thought it was so, so pretty. Um, what I will do is I will take a picture of that piece. Uh, I, I still have it. When I'm finished this, and I'll in, insert it into the uh, into the video. And you can see if you could pick out any of the lace that I added in there, but it's very effective. 
the water. Just trying to see if I can get enough of this off to add it somewhere. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on this on the, these ones or not. That would be good there if I took the white piece away. I think that looks pretty good actually. I rather like that. Which way do we want to put it? Down there, up there. I don't like it there. Maybe. Or maybe we can put it down below and put another little tiny piece above. And to see if I can get it cut. So yes, I really wish I had more of this because I've used it a lot, but I will keep my eye out for it. Very picky to cut, but oh so pretty to use. What better thing to be doing on a Sunday afternoon? And we decided we're ordering in tonight. I love that. I'll work here in my studio all afternoon, take a little break for some a snack, and then uh, I think I might take a little shower before supper. And it'll be really nice to order in. Okay, so how do we like this? Yeah, I might put I can't get any more of the net away from this one. You can't really see the net, but I just want to trim it up a little more. It's very fine. Little tiny pieces. We'll see, I might end up having it down below where it was in the first place, but yeah, because it has the right, it has the right curve. I can play with these things for hours. Yeah, I kind of like that, the way it's going there. So I think I'm going to put that on it. Too much. I just need enough to tack it in place so that I can take it to the machine and stitch it. Oh, it sticks to my fingers. I gotta use the tweezers. There we go. Every once in a while I'll have to get up and go wash my hands because then it starts sticking to my fingers and I can't do anything. There. I think that's pretty good. A little bit of sparkle there and I might take just the tiniest, there's a little piece that I cut off here, just the tiniest little, little piece and just with a leaf and put it in that little space right there. Often the way I might build build a piece, a piece of fiber art as well, a larger piece. Um, I do different ones. I do realistic ones, and these are made from what are called what um, they're called jelly prints, gelatin mono prints. So they're the mold is made of a of a gelatin. It has a little bit of give. If you you can buy them, and they're called G E L L I. And uh, if you're not if you're new to it, it's a it's a substrate that you can use for printing on and you can roll paint acrylic paint or fabric paint which is what I use and then these are these are dried flowers um, I have a stack of foam books 
I save them in the summer and the fall and then later in fall or winter even I can do them so I roll out paint onto my jelly and then I lay down bits of floral and then I put my piece of fabric on top and rub it and then pull it off and um, that's just a simplified version but there's there's many ways to do it um, I'm gonna cut that so I think that's about enough I'm not sure if this one needs something else or not it's, I don't want to cover it up too much that's probably probably about it so I'm going to give that a, a little bit of time to let dry set it aside and then there's just one little thing I want to do this is a book that I did I think a couple of summers ago clean my mess off. Um, boiled pages I don't know if you've ever heard of it uh, you probably you may be able to see the outlines of, of some flowers in these pages so these are made with watercolor papers some are nicer than others. I love this one. And I've actually worked back into this one, I think, with a little bit of, I'm not sure if I used pastel or I think it might be colored pencil, um, just to bring it out. And I, my plans are to, you can really see this one, um, to work a little more into it, to bring out the, uh, the prints. So basically the watercolor paper is packaged, layered up, with um, flowers and then it's put in a pot to boil and there is something added to the pot I can't remember if it's just vinegar or a mordant I'd have to go look it up because I haven't done it now for quite a while I really like this one this one was a hydrangea and look look how definitive the leaves are and there's a leaf here so this means I could I could draw something over here nice fern these were nasturtiums, so there's a big blank, but I can, um, this one printed quite nicely. So if I wanted to, I could draw into that more nasturtium. And I've just stitched them together. Look at this one, I really love this one. Um, what is this? I believe it's a, okay, I'm gonna have to leave the name and find it out because I've, it's, I've just gone blank. And it's one that I have quite a few of. I really love them. They're, a, they're kind of a late summer, fall shade plant. And um, I'll see if I can look it up. And a fern. And some more. So this was meant to be drawing into. But I was experimenting with some dissolvable um, stabilizer one day. And uh, Queen Anne's Lace in a deep color. And there's a big, a big blank space here, and so I thought, well, maybe it might be nice to actually paste that onto the front. Maybe right about there. I don't want it to be right at the top. So while I have my, my matte medium out, I thought, well, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to glue, glue this piece. This is a, this is a piece that I could use really uh, it's made with thread thread lace just by free motion stitching on my water soluble interfacing but I was cleaning up this morning and I picked up the book to look at it and I noticed this was sitting on the shelf beside it so I thought well why don't I why don't I use it okay so I think I'm gonna put it right there I don't want it to be too high up and I want to be able to I could write something up there but I you know I don't want this to be right up off the top so still this hasn't got enough it hasn't got enough to stick and you can be quite liberal with this matte medium because it's um, it's got a matte finish and it will dry clear Edition, and then what I can do is work into the front of the book. So I did this book a couple summers ago and I really haven't done much work in it but 
it's the kind of thing that it just sits there for a while until one day you get inspired and decided you're going to do something with it. So I was thinking maybe I'd put it out beside my, my place in the dining area. And some days when I'm having my tea, I could keep my colored pencils there handy. And I might just want to add a little, a little sketch to it, especially as uh, spring and summer approaches and we start getting a few flowers growing. It might be nice to um, sketch a few flowers into it. There. pretty thick so there I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and then I can add a little more to it later if I want to I say I am So that's done. My two bookmarks are ready now for the go back to the sewing machine as soon as they dry. So uh, I'm going to finish drinking my cup of tea and then decide what I'm going to do next. So I just thought I'd give you a little um, a little view of my studio today. As you can see, we still have snow out there. We had a little bit of fresh snow yesterday. Um, and I'll just back out a little bit. My small studio. That's the machine over there that sits in front of my window. Um, the blind is down, so I know it's a little bit hard to see. And this is where I was just sitting and working with bookmarks and oh can't even see that because there's too much light coming in I'm going to learn about this someday and when I got finished working with my bookmarks I got up and I just started putting a few more pieces together for this what's going to be a little baby quilt it's hard to discern the pattern, especially on the right side where it's not quite finished yet again, but it's, um, it's a rope. And so when I sit and sew that, I sit at my sewing machine. That's over here in the corner. What's on the screen is actually uh, what I was playing, one of my favorite artists, classical artists, modern classical, I guess. Ludovico, I don't know how to pronounce it. Ludovico Ainodi. And I really enjoy his work. So that's where I sit when I'm, uh, when I'm just kind of tired or sometimes after supper and I don't want to do anything too serious. And I have a design wall that's just behind my rocker where I will sit and do some handwork and I'm going to try this again. This is what I was working on today. Putting the flower onto that. And then I also did the bookmarks, which I moved because they're now ready to go over and have a little stitching done on them. So I moved them over to beside my my other sewing machine, which still has the other ones on there, which are almost, almost finished. And so the next time I feel like doing that, it takes a little bit of attention. And it's also um, something that I have to do. When I can focus, and it's also a little hard on the shoulders, so I have to be able to think about it and relax my shoulders. And so I'm not going to do that for now. And this is, uh, I've got stuff crammed in every little inch of space. 
beside each machine. Little shelf. Love my hanging plants as well. This is my cupboard where I keep it open most of the time, but my ironing board can fold up and go inside that cupboard, but it's usually open. So I just thought I'd show you a little bit. Washroom on the right. This is a picture that I was just going to put in and a view down the hall to my living room.